Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to my channel, Z for Zip. My name is Z. Um, today we'll be doing a slightly different talk, actually, and um, it's going to be based upon um, some experiences that I've had, and definitely after speaking with some friends, I thought it would be good for me just to do a little video to summarize um, something that, uh, that, that, that happens, especially when you're a driver of a motor vehicle. So, I had an experience once. Uh, once upon a time, I owned um, uh, a car called a Voxel Amiga. It was um, lovely... Um, a lovely sedan or saloon as you call it um and it was um i mean it's, it's an old car now but it was a uh, definitely a big i would say almost a luxurious kind of saloon um and it's funny a friend of mine he has a similar car today called uh, audi a6 and um one thing that uh, we both noticed is that with a newer generation of vehicles after say 2001 whenever you have an issue with it it's not like the old days where you'd go to a mechanic and he'd give it the once over. Nowadays, you go to a mechanic, the first thing they want to do is they want to plug a computer into it and do a diagnostic. Before they even talk about what of the issues that are repairs are, that diagnostic is usually about 100, 150 pounds. So that's a heavy expense you have to pay up front before you even get to know the nature of the problem. Now, I remember actually my brother-in-law introduced me to something called an OBD2 reader. It was a clever little tool you could buy. It was the one that I bought actually on his recommendation was um it was a twenty pound tool. And what an ODB reader does basically it's like um basically like a handheld computer with a cable which plugs into a diagnostic port underneath the um the the, the driver side um compartment. There's usually like a hidden um reader, like a socket which you plug into. And basically what this reader does, it it basically scans your car. It scans the uh, the the computer function of it, and basically reads any diagnostic codes, issues, things like that. Now the OBD2 sensor or the uh, the, the the controller is usually in most cars, like I said, after 2001. So um, any older cars may you may try have trouble finding this uh, particular socket, but in most cars after 2001, they will have this socket, and most manufacturers will have this socket just to plug in that diagnostic reader we are talking about now i bought one of amazon many years ago i think about 10 years ago and it was um i think about 10 15 pounds um i'll put an image on the screen and it's, it was a, generally it was a good contraption it was a bit a bit temperamental because you had to have it you had to run it while the ignition was on first stage but not fully on so the car couldn't be running while you're running it you had to constantly clear the codes and rescan it, and um, and, uh, and so sometimes you had to scan it two, three times to basically get things to work. Um, but it was good in certain things. For example, if you had the engine management light off, you can clear the engine management light, which was good because sometimes my Voxel had the habit of going into limp mode, and you wanted to turn it off so the engine would function right. Um, but yeah, definitely with my friend, as you can see in this video, he has an Audi A6 engine management lights come on, um, and. He's bought uh, a clever little Bluetooth tool, and um, you're going to see it with the information on screen. And this uh, Bluetooth tool actually is, um, it's it's clever actually because it works on wireless. And what's amazing now is that with the newer generation of smartphones, whether it's an iPad or Android, or sorry, iPhone or Android, um, you can get free apps from the store. And these apps have the ability to basically scan through thoroughly and uh, give you some amazing results in terms of um, the diagnostics. But what's also very clever is that you can copy and export those results and then send them onto your mechanic. So this way you're totally bypassing whatever a mainstream mechanic would do and get the same results. And at the same time, also know the exact product codes. It, 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 you can know exactly the, the source of those fault codes without having to Google it and panic afterwards. So... The, the way the technology has changed now with these uh the wireless uh, versions and the way they work with smartphones amazing so yeah without any further ado let me just um show you a clip of the video and here my friend uh, actually describes the way the wireless version uh, actually works so yeah i think you'll enjoy this one okay so this is my friend here he's going to turn the engine into first stage ignition okay he's then going to go to the app on his phone as you can see, the engine management light is still on. Engine management light is still on, that's right, confirm that. Okay. So what's the app called on your phone? Is it by Streetwise? So, app is called... It's quite a few apps, yeah, but sure. there's a free one, which is Car Scanner. Car Scanner, okay. So yes. 
Så skal jeg tage glæde og sige, men jeg er sjov at se dig. Jeg kan ikke gøre det så engs. Sæt ting i sig op. Mål kors. Kuf. Mål kors. Så dan. Turn off the wifi. Go into wifi settings. Make sure it's wifi enabled. Oh, so it's actually connected through wifi, not Bluetooth. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. It's already connected it to it. Ah, yes, see, Wi-Fi BT2, yep, that makes sense. Go into the app again. Connect. So it's the connector that plugs into it. It's actually a Wi-Fi yeah, receiver, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I'll show you there. Oh, it's, it's connected and connected, yep. Protocol established. Yep, and then afterwards we but go it's going to the dashboard. But it's going to ask you what test you want to do. Yep. Just double move your camera, I'll, I'll, I'll maneuver for you. Just yep. telling you what the speed is and anything. Oh, excellent, so that's the engine management. Yep. Then we want to look at codes now, yeah? Yeah. So look at codes, we go to diagnostic troubleshooting code. Yeah, we went to the whole lot. Okay, cool. Click on read. Read. So that's doing one or twelve tests. Yeah, it's already found the code. Aha. Uh -huh. So it looks like Particular my GPF. Trap. Which is a common fault on diesel cars by the way. So that's um yeah, that's a deal with uh, diesel uh, particular filters, isn't it? Yep. Find another code? Okay, so it's like this, da, 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 DTC to some code. We might have to check that code out. Not exactly sure what it's saying. Last DTC clear. Since last, oh, so it might just need to be cleared again. And then it tells you down here what stage is doing. Okay. You see, 11 of 12. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, so it's doing basically everything. Check <laughs> Bit like an MOT. And then it's done. Then what you can do is export this okay. into a message. So I'm okay. just going to send it to my friend here. Cool. That's fantastic. And that's what I've done. So you're and actually you giving them the diagnostic results straight away. There you go, and you can show it to your mechanic. Fantastic. Go back to the page, and then we'll go clear code. Yep. And it's telling me, do you want to clear the code? It's clearing the code. And now it's just working on it to clear the code. That's fantastic. So hopefully you clear the engine management light, which there I can go. now see has gone. The engine management light, just can you see there, the folks? It is now gone. And then it tells you when it's completed. Yeah, oh, let's see. So it's now, yeah, DTC clearing complete. Okay. And then clear. Clear. Okay. And I'll do another clear. Well, this isn't a clear anything off completely. So it's going to clear all the results it's found. Yeah, we're just checking anything. Is it rescanning it? Is it rescanning it to see if it's actually cleared it? To see how much of it's actually fixed. Okay. It's funny because I have the old school orange ODBC reader which is cabled but I'm going to be honest this wireless one seems a lot better. Indeed. My one I have to flick with the ignition but I know you've got the engine on fully and you can still do it so in that case it's kind of better. Do you want to ask how much it was? And if you look at it, so it's top of the airbag, it's testing the airbags. Testing the airbags, yeah. Testing the airbags, airbags are good. Fantastic. The doors open. So it is a, 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 how much was this wireless receiver you got for? This was from um, Euro Car Parts for 20 quid. 20 quid? Yeah. Bargain and then. Bit. Turn my car off. Yep, turn the car off. Yeah, ignition off. So the receiver thing's tucked away. Yep. And now we're going to turn it back on to see if anything flashes up. That's correct. So you go and see here. Cool, yep. Okay, ignition on. That's because the door's open. Door's open, that's fine. And the engine management light's now gone. That's cleared. Excellent. Wow. So how much is the diagnostic if you go to um, most mainstream mechanics about 150 pounds? Just probably exactly. Viewing. Or if you go to just for the code itself, it's 50 pounds. No, you can believe that. And you've yeah. just done a hit for 20 quid. That's it. Mate, excellent. Well, guys, I hope that helps. That's an excellent little trick there into uh, diagnosing your own cars. But most cars after 2001 do have the uh, OBD port located underneath the, uh, usually under the uh, driver's side, but can also be under the passenger side. But yeah, here we've just proved something. You can diagnose your own car and you can find out the faults and there's no need to pay some stupid money to a mechanic. All right, guys, hope this helps. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye.